The NASGP has five different program areas in its GP locum curriculum. In this program, we look at all the practical steps involved in ensuring each of your consultations runs as smoothly as possible, right from before you even make the booking all the way through to arriving back home after the session. The first video in this series was about what you need to do before you even start to take bookings. And in the second video, we'll look at the process of taking a booking. The first thing to establish is the commercial and professional relationship of booking your services, which protects both you and the practice. It can be confusing at first working out how to position ourselves, as we are usually so used to having been an employee and practices being our employers. But when working as a locum, the status is very different. As a locum, you are an independent service contractor. You are the business that provides services and the practice is contracting your services. The practice may know you from when you're an employee, so it's important to have clarity that you will not be an employee for this engagement. As an independent service contractor, your legal status can either be as self-employed or as a limited company, paying tax and NHS pension accordingly. Something that causes a lot of anxiety are the IR35 off payroll rules that, although they've been around for many years, are now the responsibility for the practice to determine. So having specific substitutability clauses in your T's and C's, like the ones we've built into Locum Deck, are vital to reference in every booking. And all the while providing services as a fully qualified GP with a license to practice. The practice in this situation is your client and you will be invoicing them for the services you have performed. They will not be your employer and you will not be their employee and so will not be on their payroll. When it comes to engaging a locum, the manner in which practices tend to book locums can be confusing, being a mixture of practices behaving both as a client and wrongly also as an employer, whereby the practice may want to dictate both the terms of the service, sometimes even the rates, and whether or not you want to exert your right to claim NHS pension. From the point of view of the locum, we call this sort of request reactive, as you then have to react to it and in all likelihood renegotiate to make sure the engagement is as an independent contractor for services on your terms so that you can practice within the framework of your professional standards in the way that you know best. Otherwise, by being on the back foot, you're more likely to end up agreeing to work that may not be correctly specified, potentially leading to issues around risk management and burnout. Fortunately, the NASGP and other locum chambers have been pioneering a more proactive approach, more akin to how contractors in other sectors operate. This proactive approach is where you, as the contractor for services, specify in advance the granular detail and nuances of how you choose to work. By specifying your availability and work pattern in advance, you are much more able to have control over your professional standards, all according to your robust terms and conditions, which you automatically confirm using tools like Locum Deck, making sure that you can take full control and responsibility. And because you're 100% in control, this means that you can safely give practice the power to book you instantly, according to exactly your terms, making their lives much simpler, even giving you an edge over others who are still using a reactive way of booking work. And just one last tip. If possible, in the early stages of making a booking, it's worth asking why a practice needs you, as this can help give you an understanding of what to expect when you're working there. A practice that plans ahead and books a locum to support the practice when one of the GPs goes off on planned leave suggests the practice takes a proactive approach to support welfare and workload. Whereas difficulties in recruiting and retaining GPs might suggest something else. For some of us this might sound alarm bells, but for others this indicates both a challenge and an opportunity to help out colleagues who are struggling in a practice that needs our support. Thanks for watching. Now that you're in a position to book work that will allow you to thrive as a GP, look out for the next part of Programme 3 of our GP Locum curriculum, which looks at how to prepare yourself for arrival at the practice. <laughs>